the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him red ground about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of sin, but the ark of God dwelleth within curse. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with, with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Shall thy build me a house for build me a house for me to dwell in, whereas I have dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word within of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why did ye not me in house of freedom? Now therefore, so shall thou say unto thy servant David, Thus says the Lord, Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou went, went, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will approve a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judge to be over my people Israel, I have called them to rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord tells thee that he will make thee in house. And when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thine seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy vows, and I will establish his hand. He shall build a house for my hand, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of me and with the stripes of the children of me. Okay, we are now have a song. In the rain, help him know that three days ago we are saying two sweet spirits. Thank you. 
Lord, we ask that you will continue your work of transforming us in your image. Continue your work of touching our hearts where we will grow to love you more and to love one another more. We ask, Lord, that you help us to grow to be the disciples you are calling us to be. May we we'll go out in your vineyard and be the hands, feet, and mouth of you wherever we go. Lord, we lift up our communities that's represented here in person as well as represented virtually. Touch your people right now. Your people need you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, somebody don't know which way to go, Lord. Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, point them in the right direction. Lord, somebody don't know you in the pardon of, your, your, their, of their sins. Touch them right now when they will surrender their lives to you and accept you as Lord and Savior and follow you. We ask that you would go in the hospital rooms, go in the nursing homes, and go into the various homes or other locations where your people are lying on their bed of affliction. Touch them right now. Heal them right now. Ease the pain in them right now. Strengthen them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Go behind the prison walls right now, Lord. Touch them right now. Only you know whether they are innocent or whether they are guilty. But Lord, touch them anyway. That they will feel your power. That they will feel your presence. That they will feel your love and compassion. And in, in, in the meantime, that somebody behind the prison walls would turn their lives over to you on this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would lift up our country. So much chaos, so much foolishness, so much just craziness going on all around us. Lord, but I know no matter what, you still sitting on the throne. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you touch the hearts of the people that they return from all of this hatred Turn from all of this divisiveness. Turn from all of this violence. Turn from all of this crazy rhetoric. And they will speak love, unity, and stop this fighting, Lord. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would come into our communities as well. So much crazy going on all around us. People are losing lives daily for foolishness. People are getting injured daily for foolishness, Lord. Touch their hearts right now, Lord, that people turn from all of this, Lord. Lord, we invite you to this sanctuary. Sanctify this place. Sanctify each, I don't want each of us here. Sanctify me as I proclaim your message to your people, Lord. And let everything be said with clarity. Let everything be said as transformative, Lord. And I uh, beg that you will just anoint me right now, Lord. Because you, you, have, you have a word for your people that you have given me on this day, Lord. Lord, that we want to help us to grow. Because one of these days you're going to call us home. And when you call us home, we want to hear you tell us, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. These are other blessings we ask in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen.
was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And it's truly an honor and a blessing to be in God's house on this beautiful Sunday. Amen. 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 And look, we want to thank each of you that are here, that are our visitors. But each way, nobody's visitors because we all are God's children. We all are part of the same family. That's God's family. So we, we are glad to see each of you here and those who are worshiping with us virtually. Yeah. And look at our message. Uh, and I think we, we, we read scriptures earlier, but God gave me a different scripture that we're going to do on today. And, uh, and I decided to be obedient to God. Amen. Uh, we're gonna, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be coming from the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 6. Again, it's the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 6. Again, Jeremiah, 23rd chapter. Verses 1 through 6. And once you feel bound, you can say amen. Mm -hmm. And it reads, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, of course. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture says the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall no longer fear or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Amen. I will use as a theme on today, God's unchanging faithfulness. God's unchanging faithfulness. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, today we find ourselves in challenging times. Our church, like many of us, many others all around us, are facing struggles and uncertainties. Yet, in the midst of these trials, we are called to remember a profound truth that is God's unchanging faithfulness. From the beginning of time, God's love and promises have remained steadfast through every storm and season. The same God who guided Moses through the Red Sea stood with David against the lion and walk with the disciples in their darkest hours. And that same God is still with us today. Amen. The book of Lamentations reminds us in Lamentations 3, 3rd chapter, verses 22 and 23, when it said, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
As we reflect on these words, let us find confidence and strength in knowing that our God is always faithful, even when the path ahead seems uncertain, even when you don't understand what's going on. But God understands it all. It may not make any sense to us, but it makes perfect sense to God. There's nothing that's going on that's hidden from God. Even all the foolishness around us, God is still at work. Today, let us unite in unity and hope, trusting in the unwavering, unwavering faithfulness of our God. Let us lift our hearts and worship daily, encourage one another, and renew our commitment to God's service. Confident that God will guide us through every challenge that we face. As we reflect on God's unchanging faithfulness, we want to look to God's word for deeper insight and encouragement. And we will examine uh, our text today from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6, because this scripture portrays God's unwavering commitment to his people even in the face of leadership failures. As we dive into this scripture, we will consider two points on today. The first point is God's commitment to restoration. God's commitment to restoration. And the second point we're going to touch on today is the promise of a righteous leader. God made a promise of a righteous leader. And look at our first point on God's commitment to restoration. We see that despite the unfaithfulness of Israel leaders, God remained faithful to his people. God promised to gather the scattered flock, restore them, and ensure their well-being. The leaders of Israel that were called shepherds had failed in their duty leading to the scattering and suffering of the people. Yet God's response was not to abandon his people, but to personally intervene. God vowed to gather the remnants of his people from where they had been driven to and bring them back home to their communities. This act of restoration was a testament to God's unwavering faithfulness. Even when human leaders fail us, God does not forsake us. Amen. Instead, God steps in to heal, to restore, and provide for his people. This promise of restoration reassures us that no matter how over our circumstances are, God's commitment to us is still firm. And God is constantly working to bring us back to a place of safety and abundance. For a small church such as ours and many others in our communities that are experiencing struggles, there's a powerful reminder that God is intimately aware of our situation. In other words, God knows what's going on in our church. But God is working to to bring healing and restoration. You know, we might get tired, but God is still at work. If you feel abandoned, or if you feel overlooked, remember that God is near. God is personally involved, and he is working behind the scenes to restore and rejuvenate this church and the community as a whole. This text is a powerful encouragement that God's plan includes growth and flourishing, not just survival. It reassures us that our best days are not behind us, but they are in front of us because God is still working on our behalf. 
I invite you to engage in persistent prayer, trusting in God's promise to restore. I encourage you to seek God's guidance and lean on God's faithfulness. I invite you to embrace God's mission to gather the scattered people by reaching out to former members, to inactive members, and to local community as a whole. God is calling us to show God's love through acts of service and genuine care. I invite you to foster an environment of unity, peace, and mutual support within our congregation and beyond, reflecting the secure and caring community that God envisions. Which leads to our second point, and that is the promise of a righteous leader. The promise of a righteous leader. This prophecy in Jeremiah pointed to the coming of Jesus Christ, the righteous branch from David's lineage. Through Jesus, God fulfilled his promise of a wise and just ruler who would bring salvation and security to his people. In contrast to the corrupt leaders of Israel, God promised to raise up a new leader from the line of David, a righteous branch who's going to reign with wisdom and justice. Again, this leader is Jesus Christ, whose life and ministry perfectly embodied God's righteousness. Christ's reign brought true justice and peace, offering salvation and security to all who follow him. The name given to Jesus is, the Lord is our righteousness, which highlights the profound truth that our righteousness and standing before God comes through Jesus. Again, let me break that down to you. That means we are righteous, we are holy, we are just, not because of our action. That is because of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed for us. In other words, stop thinking that we are more who we think that we are. Stop thinking that you are so saved and sanctified because of who you are because without Jesus we are nothing. <laughs> Through Christ we will experience the fulfillment of God's promise to lead and protect us, ensuring that we will no longer live in fear or distress, but in the secure knowledge of his everlasting faithfulness. For our church and others that's here, I invite you to remember that in Christ we find salvation and a place of security, no matter how bad or uncertainty our circumstances might be right now. Christ's leadership brings about unity and peace. As our church looks to Jesus as the ultimate leader, we can foster a spirit of unity and peace among each other, reflecting the secure and harmonious community that God desires. Christ's righteous, righteous leadership is transformative. Jesus changes hearts and lives, leading to spiritual growth and maturity. We don't change on our own. No matter how hard we try, it is impossible for us to change on our own strength. But Jesus did all of that, and he sent the Holy Spirit to do the work on his behalf. Amen. I invite you to reflect his righteousness in our daily lives. This includes fostering a culture of integrity, justice, and love within the church and how we interact with every single body, from the White House to the outhouse. Everybody is just as important. <laughs> to the CEO, to the janitor, everybody is just as important. Nobody is better than the next person. Nobody is more saved or sanctified 
than the next person because our righteousness are a filthy rag. In times of struggle, I invite you to remember that Jesus is leading our church toward a future filled with his peace and righteousness. Instead of worrying about where we are, just put our hands in Jesus' hands and seek his divine guidance. In conclusion, as we reflect on the profound truth in Jeremiah 23, 1 through 6, we are reminded of God's unchanging faithfulness and an unwavering commitment to his people. These promises give us hope and assurance in times of struggle and uncertainty. We have seen God's commitment to restoration. Despite the phase of earthly leaders, God is still bringing people together. That may not seem like, but one thing about it, God is doing work behind the scenes that nobody sees. But I guarantee you, God has not stopped. It is, it is a powerful mind for our small churches that God sees our struggle. He knows what we are dealing with and he's going to bring us back to a place of growth and vitality. And, 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 and as I remember and, and those who watched basketball remember some years back when everybody was making a mockery of the Philadelphia 76ers when they were Winning 10 games in a season, and they kept saying, trust the process. Trust the process. And eventually, they became a team that was at the bottom to a playoff contenders. So sometimes you just got to trust the process. We can't worry about what's going on because we serve a man who sits high and who looks low, who know everything that we are dealing with in the church, who knows what we're dealing with individually, who knows what's going on in our family, who knows what's going on in our community. But I'm here to let you know I serve a God who got all power in heaven and earth in his hand. So, so don't you worry about what's going on. Don't listen to the noise all around us because that's what Satan wants us to do. Listen to the noise and get distracted. That's what Satan wants us to do because when we are distracted, we are not focused on being about God's business. But I'm here to let you know that Jesus is equipping and empowering us to take what he's given us and go out and be about God's business because there's power in his name. I'm here to let you know, trust in Jesus. I'm here to let you know that it is not over. The story has not ended. We are in the middle of the pages. But I'm here to let you know that, the, that, that Jesus is working everything out where we gonna be the people that we need to be. Don't worry about what Satan is doing. I had a church, with, um, one of my churches was saying that people are building churches all around us and we can't grow. I said, don't worry about that. Just do what only you can do and trust God in the process because we can't worry about what's going on. It's too many churches anyway because everybody wanna want to be do what they want to do instead of being about God's business. But I'm here to let you know, I am not leaving God. I am not leaving Jesus. I'm going to keep my hands in his hand, and I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I'm going to walk on the water, keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm not going to take my eyes off of Jesus because if I do, we're going to be like Peter and see. So I don't want to sing. So church, don't give up. People, don't give up. We may be unfaithful. We may do. We may make decisions as a church that we don't agree with. But God is faithful. I'm not here to serve no man. 
I'm not here to serve no mama. I'm here to serve the one and only God. Because God is the one. I got the answer to. And one thing about it, if even though we may let folks down, we may let God down, but God is still faithful to us. Never give up. Stay faithful in Jesus. No matter what it looks like, even the political scene, whatever's going on, it is crazy, but God is still sitting on the throne. President Biden, former President Trump has no power that God has. Can't nobody save us like God did. No matter what, God has all power. And he loves you enough to keep his eye on you. The best is yet to come. Amen. 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 The doors of the church is open. As we reflect on God's unchanging faithfulness and the promise of righteous leader in Jesus, we are reminded of God's profound love and commitment to each of us. God desires to restore and lead us into a deeper, more fulfilling relationship with him. Today, I want to extend a hard invitation to anyone who feels the call to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Whether you are new to faith or have walked with God for many years, this is an opportunity to reaffirm your commitment or to begin a new journey. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to make that decision today. Jesus came to the earth, came to earth. Jesus lived a sin, sinless life. He died on the cross for you and I to pay for the penalty of all of our sins, past, present, and future. Early one Sunday morning, he rose from the grave. He come to death and all the eternal life to all who believe in him. By accepting Jesus Christ, you embrace his wisdom, his justice, and his righteousness. And you begin a transformative relationship that brings salvation and security. For those who have already accepted Jesus Christ, but you have felt distant or disconnected. This is a moment for you to recommit to Jesus. God's commitment to restoration means that God is always ready to welcome you back. Like the Father welcomed the Father the Son back. God is committed to, to restoration. God is committed to heal your God is committed to lead you forward in his love and grace. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you have done, no matter what you are doing, no matter what type of life you live in, you are right where Jesus wants you. He loves you even in the midst of your mess. Because Lord knows he loved me in the midst of my mess. If he can change me, he can change everybody. Jesus is not looking for you to be so religious and so all this. Because all the outward appearance means nothing to Jesus is your heart. It's not right. Jesus is more concerned about not, 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 not your religion. He's, he's concerned about having that relationship with you. 
Will there be one? For those who hear and those who may be worshiping virtually, that's time to decide on where you, what, what you want to do today. I invite you to pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge my need for you. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins, and that you rose again. I ask for your forgiveness and invite you into my heart and to my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. God, restore and help me to live according to your will. In your name, I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer for the first time or as a recommitment, especially those who are virtually with us virtually, just leave a comment in the comment section. For those who are here, you can come forward now, or if you like, you can see me out of church or see me in time. Because we would love to support and pray and help you grow in your faith journey. God loves you so much. He said his daughter, son, Jesus, is going to cross for you. He died.
May we go forth with the assurance of God's unchanging faithfulness and the hope found in our righteous leader, Jesus Christ. As you go out into the world, may you carry his love and light with you, restoring and renewing those around you. May you trust in his wisdom, walk in his justice, and live in his righteousness. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Glad to see you. Right. It's been a little while 